so
Excuse me.
Good afternoon and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Redeemer. At this time, we ask that you stand in either body or in spirit. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Billy. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. But the souls of the righteous are in the hands of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster. And they're going from us to be, to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Those who trust in him will understand truth and the faithful will abide with him in love because grace and the mercy are upon his holy ones and he watches over his elect. Here ends the reading. reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, <coughs> I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. <clears throat> Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been known fully. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Here ends the reading. reading from the Revelation to John. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. 
And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Here ends the reading. Please be seated for the eulogies. Good afternoon. I'm Matt. I'm Billy's little brother. I'm amazed and so thankful to see you all here today. But I am not surprised you came. I know Billy touched your life in a positive way as he did mine. Billy was my only brother, my best friend, my business partner, and my guiding light, an incredible role model. 
As painful as these past few weeks and months have been, I have survived by realizing how fortunate I was to have Billy as my brother. By realizing how special it's been to work with him for these past 13 years and pursue our professional dreams together. By remembering how much fun we had together. We were thick as thieves our entire lives. And I am so grateful for the time we had together. How fortunate are we all to have had Billy in our lives. Today, I'd like to share with you a bit about our life together and who Billy was. Growing up with Billy was special. When we were little, he wouldn't hit me, no matter how much I swung at him. Of course, he'd hold me down and smile in total domination, but he would never hit me. When we were really little and Dad was coaching at Waynesburg, we lived on a farm in Holbrook, Pennsylvania. It was in the middle of nowhere on hundreds of acres of land we owned. We had no neighbors for miles, but we had each other. We explored the woods, played in the creeks, and invented games to play together. We also spent a lot of time with my dad on the football field and in the locker room. We got to be very close with dad's players, and I'm grateful that they are here with us today, many of them. We learned what it felt like to win and lose a competitive fire was born. It's during these times that our strong bond as brothers was formed. I look back on those days with wonder and amazement. They are great memories that will live with me forever. Later, Dad took a job coaching at Hamden Sydney College just outside Farmville, Virginia. Mom worked in the Amelia County School System where we went to school. We lived in the Farmville suburbs in Kimberly Hills. It was a great place to grow up. Billy and I were completely obsessed with baseball at that point in our lives. I can remember throwing catch with Billy and Dad in our backyard for hours upon hours. Billy was a pitcher, and I was always the catcher. I think we broke every slat in the pool fence we used as our backstop. I can remom remember mom and dad talking to us about being champions, about personal accountability, pushing us to work hard to improve our skills. We played organized baseball all the way to high school, but because we were two years apart, we never had the chance to play on the same team. However, in Billy's junior year, I made the varsity baseball team as a freshman, and for two remarkable seasons, Billy and I got to play together. We also played on the golf team together those two years. I didn't know it at the time, but those were the best two years of my life. I remember it like it was yesterday. Of course, Billy was the captain of our team. I'm not sure Billy ever played on a team where he wasn't the captain. <laughs> he was a tremendous leader. He led by example, and whether they would admit it or not, all of our teammates admired Billy. David Zilly, our high school baseball coach and dear family friend, reminded me of a time when Billy ran through a center field fence going after a well-hit ball. He caught it. He ran right through the wall. That's what Billy was. He'd run through a wall to reach his goals. Billy worked so hard in school. What he lacked in talent, he made up for in effort. He'd outwork anyone, always with perfect grades and a million extracurricular activities to add to his college applications. He finished first in his class, valedictorian, was prom king, and I'm sure there are many Amelia and Southside Virginia folks here who came to celebrate Billy's life. After Billy graduated from Amelia, he went on to Hampton, Sydney, and I left Amelia in the same year to finish high school at Woodbury Forest. We made some incredible friends at this point in our lives. Many of my Woodbury guys are here today and got to know Billy as we'd head down there on the weekends and have the time of our lives. Billy was in the Sigma Nu fraternity house. It was a cast of characters. And many of Billy's Hamden Sydney fraternity brothers and dear friends are here today. Billy played baseball and, of course, did very well academically, but it was the friendships he made that defined this period of his life. He was a really likable guy. He was the kind of person you'd meet and instantly felt like you'd known him forever. When he'd meet my friends, they'd become lifelong friends instantly. He had that way about him just a great guy that you wanted to be around. After Hamden, Sydney, Billy took a job working in investment banking. He killed himself for years and climbed as high as he could until he reached the point where he needed an MBA to get further in that industry. 
He was accepted to the Owen School of Management at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, where he received his MBA in 2004. Of course, Billy made a whole new group of lifelong friends there. Many are also here today. At every juncture in his life, he seemed to pick up friends by the, do by the dozen as evidenced by how many of you are here today. At the same time, Billy was finishing business school. At Vanderbilt, I was working in New York City for the largest wine auction house in the world and decided at 25 years old that I was going to be an entrepreneur and start a wine business of my own. Of course, Billy was the reason I was able to do that and encouraged me to do so. He was always my biggest supporter and most constructive critic. While he was working for BB&T here in Richmond, he built the financial model and helped me write the offering memorandum to raise money to get the company off the ground. I started the company in 2006, and we always dreamed of working together. After the credit crisis and market mayhem of 07 and 08, Billy decided it was time in 2009 to leave the banking world and became the company's CFO and an equity partner. He and Mandy were married, and he could re work remotely from Richmond, which is what he did for the past 13 years. It's also over this time that Billy and Mandy had their three amazing children, Anna, Hudson, and Cece. Working with Billy was a dream. It wasn't always easy. We didn't always agree. We fought sometimes, but we did agree that there, the way to be successful was to treat people fairly, to employ people with character, to provide a valuable service that people needed, to do things with integrity and passion. We never disagreed on those principles and they carry our company today. Billy is, and always will be, the most annoyingly rational person I've ever met. <laughs> I would dream things up, and he'd tell me why we couldn't do that or why we should. He was the yin to my yang. I will always be grounded in the countless conversations and debates Billy and I had. As I go forward with the company today, I can hear his counsel and feel his presence. Some of our colleagues are here today. They didn't have to come, but they are here. They admired Billy like we all did. I'm so grateful they made the journey and are here and are in our lives. I've been up here for a while long enough, but I'd like to close by starting by sharing a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote with you that I've been thinking a lot about. He once wrote, it's not the length of life, but the depth of life. He who is not every day conquering some fear has not learned the secret of life. Billy knew the secret of life. He took excellence to an extreme. He never backed down from a challenge, and like Guppy, our mom and dad, preached to us as young boys, he believed, like I do, that if we worked hard enough, if we put everything we had into it, if we, we could accomplish whatever we wanted in life, we could be and do whatever we wanted. We are products of our parents. It's not fair that they've lost their oldest son, but I want them to know that we are who we are because of them. We are all products of the environment we grew up in, of the friends we've made and the people we surround ourselves with. In these moments of darkness and profound sadness, it's easy to feel buried by it and overwhelmed. But I challenge you to turn that around, to feel grounded like a seed planted in soil, planted by the memories of Billy and the meaningful, deep life he led. He set the standard, as Mike Tomlin always said. His children knew this, but they'll need to be reminded that's our job now to make sure they know what an amazing human their father was. He loved them dearly and wanted nothing more than to see them succeed, grow old, and live happy lives. Let's make sure we all do our part to help Billy and Mandy with the kids. Their future depends on it. Billy walked with purpose and, and gave us an example to follow. Let's make sure we all do too. It's what Billy would have wanted, and I'll spend the rest of my life trying to honor them. I love you all and thank you very much. To my Uncle Billy, you were the fun dad. You were the dad who never said no to us, especially when we needed food and candy right after practices. Maybe you couldn't resist how good we smelled. <laughs> Next year, when I return to the field, I will escort you.
Next year, when I return to the field, how will I score any goals without your push and drive to take the lid off? It won't be the same without you on the sideline, but I know you will be a constant fan from above. You took the time to teach me things about the world, and I enjoyed learning from you. That's one of the many reasons why I always attempted to call shotgun in your car before Anna did. <clears throat> Not a minute goes by without me thinking of you. Every night since you've been gone, I look for you in the sky. I will never forget you, and I will always see you as my second dad. Love you forever, your Finn Diesel. <laughs> Billy was funny, patient, caring, but most of all, he was the most kind-hearted person out there. He was the cool dad, the fun dad. I'll never forget the late night gas stations runs after own touch or practice. When the other parents drove home, it was always too late to stop, or my mom would give me her look, but not Uncle Billy. We were only supposed to get one snack and one drink, but somehow I always ended up with ice cream and two bags of chips. <laughs> it feels like just yesterday you were watching game film of past games to make sure we were prepared. It won't be the same without you at our games to support, but I'll always remember who's watching me from above and will continue to play for you. Not a day goes by that I don't think about you, and not a day will. I'm so glad I got to say goodbye, but would do anything for one last day. You are greatly missed. Love you forever, Uncle Billy. My dad was my best friend. He was someone you could talk to about anything and he would listen. He was someone, someone that was interested in the things that his kids did. Like ever since I've been playing soccer, he's been interested in learning the support that he never played. But his kids did, so he was interested. Almost every Saturday or Sunday afternoon, he would have a Premier League game on like, and be shouting at the screen like he had controlled the game. He hoped and dreamed for me to play in Europe one day with some of the best players in the world. I promise I'll try and get there next. It's going to be so different without him being basically on the sideline, either screaming, let's go 1-5 or take the lid off. But I do know he'll be screaming it from up in the sky. I love my dad so much. I love when he would come back from playing golf or after my games, how happy he was and the smile he had on his face. His smile was... His smile was so... Contagious not to smile wick. My dad was the best dad in the world. Not a day has gone by without missing him. I love you, I love you, I love you. To infinity and beyond. Forever. We all need to blow our nose. <laughs> Please go for it. Whew. All right. We're going to make it. First of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone for being here. 
It means a lot to me, it means a lot to my family, it means a lot to our close friends, and we just love you so much, and thank you. All right. Okay. The first time that Billy told me that he loved me, he followed it up with, but don't make a big deal about it. <laughs> we had just started dating a few months before, and I think he felt like it was a little too soon. Even though it probably was, I told him that I loved him too, because I did. We had met at a surprise birthday party for Vanessa Hampton, her 25th, in July of 2004. Right after we began dating, Billy became busy creating a wine business. He ignored me for a little while. His brother, Matt, had this great idea, and before I knew it, Matt was coming to Richmond's on the weekends here and there, and Billy would disappear into a business plan or plans for warehouse space and who knows what else. But in 2006, we bought our first home together in Oregon Hill. We both worked long hours. He was an investment banker at BB&T, working for Matt Thompson, and I was a new associate at Hunt and Williams. We had a schnoodle, a cockapoo, and a cute little house that overlooked downtown Richmond that was down the street from Mama Zoo. We had a great group of friends. Our late 20s were just fun. We got married in 2007, and Billy surprised me by writing inside my wedding ring that he loved me more. But I got the best of him when I snuck back into the jeweler and added to the inside of his ring, no, you don't. <laughs> that might say a lot about our marriage. Not sure, but it made for a great memory and a really good laugh on our wedding day. Not too long after we were married, we had Anna in 2009, Hudson in 2012, and Cece in 2015. We moved to Midlothian in December of 2012. This December is the 10th anniversary of our move-in date. When we said our vows about in sickness and in health, I don't think we knew what we were signing up for at the time. We were only 30. We figured, what the heck, that won't be for a while. But I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016, and Billy was diagnosed with colon cancer in April of 2020. Right at the beginning of the pandemic, when it still felt somewhat like a zombie apocalypse was taking place. Even during a pandemic, our friends moved into action, taking care of our children so that Billy could be at his first surgery in the hospital, me switching off nights with Tom Wascom. The hospital had just started allowing visitors again, and Beth Madish made sure that we were well taken care of during our stay. After his first surgery, he began chemotherapy, and the fight was on. I won't go through all the details. Living through it was hard enough. Rehashing it would just be torture. But what I want to focus on is all the help and support, friendship and love that sustained us and that continues to sustain our family. We have one hell of a village. We would not have survived the last two and a half years without this village. It's kind of like how Mr. Rogers told us to focus on the helpers. If I step back and I look at the last couple of years, I see pain and suffering, but I also see so many helpers. Guys that loved Billy so much that they were willing to travel across the United States and pick up their clubs whenever he needed a break. I know that was a sacrifice. <laughs> Families that loved us so much that they purchased gift cards, brought us meals, sent flowers, cards, and gifts. Friends that took my children to practices, had them over for playdates and sleepovers, and hugged our necks when we were sad. A work family that has exhibited patience and support, kindness, and time. I see you. <sighs> Friends drove Billy to treatment, stayed with him in the hospital overnight, researched treatments. Again, some might see hell, sadness, and loss, and I see that too, but I also see love. In the end, it was love that Billy was focused on. 
His love for me, his love for our children, his love for his family and friends. That was what was most important to him during his final days on earth. <sighs> he loved our children so much. To Anna, Hudson, and Cece, you will always know that. He was so proud of you and the people that you are becoming. He wanted to make sure that you know that he is always with you. He will always be with you, and you are his best legacy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> the four of us are going to continue to make him proud. On the Tuesday before Billy passed, Grace was with us, and we did a service. He was quiet the entire service, not really speaking that much at that time. But after the service was over, the kids and I circled around him, and we told him how much we loved him and how grateful we were that he was ours. And Billy sat right up and he said, I love you, I love you, I love you. And then we all told him that we loved him too. We hugged him and he went right back to sleep. On Wednesday, <laughs> Billy uh, got up and he had his final food and Jane and I walked him back to his room and um, he looked up at her and he said, one word, privacy. <laughs> and when she left, he looked at me and he just said, I love you. So love was really all that mattered for Billy at the end. And honestly, when you boil most of the things down to what matters, at the end, it's love. And he was so loved. If I can ask anything of all of you, the week of Thanksgiving, the beginning of the holidays, just focus on love. Be grateful for the people in your life that you love. Spend at least a moment acknowledging the blessing that it is to be able to be loved and to love. That would be the greatest gift to Billy. I want to thank so many of you for supporting our family and keeping us together at this time. We really wouldn't be here without you all. And I love you all so much, and I'll never be able to say thank you enough. Just know it. I am so grateful. And I have one more ask. On Tuesday of last week, my baby sister was diagnosed with leukemia, is in the hospital in Charlotte, and will be there for at least the next few weeks. She wanted to be here so badly. And I know she's watching, so I'm just going to tell her that she's strong. She'll never be alone. And she has one hell of an angel watching over her in heaven. <sighs> Sorry, I'm almost <laughs> done. Okay. And to Billy, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I always will. Loving you was a big deal. It will always be a big deal. And just so you know, and one last time, no, you don't. May I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I want to take a moment to name the reality that no one wanted this day to come. Nobody wanted it. Still, today is a day when we honor Billy's vibrant life. Today is a day when we give him back to God, who so lovingly gave him to us. As we just heard from Matt, Anna and her friends, and Mandy, Billy was a remarkable person. He knew the importance of being in the present moment this was best displayed when he was with family and friends. Billy had such a gift 
for making everyone in the room feel seen and appreciated. He could make even the shyest person come out of their shell and shine. What is more, Billy had an incredibly infectious smile. He was full of energy and loved to laugh, even if he laughed until tears rolled down his face. Billy was a man who poured himself into his friendships. He understood that kindness and compassion were the key ingredients to making these friendships last. It also helped that he was always game to have a fun time. More than that, he kept in touch with his friends, offering support through not only the tough times, but also in the little shared moments, such as texting the latest economy article first thing in the morning. It may come as no surprise that Billy was devoted to his family. He was a dutiful son, a loyal brother, a caring husband, and an affectionate father. Billy put his family first. This devotion came from his deep love for them. Because as we all know, Billy was full of love. He was full of love, a love that is still palpable in this church right now. When we think of love, I wonder what comes to mind. Our second reading this afternoon is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I believe this reading provides us an answer to our question. In the letter, Paul is writing to an early Christian community during the first century. The community is in conflict, so Paul writes to them and tells them about love. He says, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Love is the most powerful force in the world. Just before Billy and Mandy exchanged their infamous wedding rings, they heard these verses from 1 Corinthians read aloud during their ceremony. I imagine this image of love informed Billy's marriage with Mandy and how Billy went about being a dad to his children. He put love at the center because love was important. As you just heard from Mandy, Billy made sure his family knew he loved them in his final days. I love you, he said. I love you, I love you. What mattered most to Billy was love. Billy was a child of God who was also beloved by his family in this huge village as seen by all of the people packed into this church. It is true that he will be missed. Billy's life offers us the, the gift to grieve him lavishly. And grieve we will, because Billy's life was beautiful. It's hard, but there may never come a time when we do not grieve the loss of those we love. Our experience of love as humans is powerful, and yet this love is only a fraction of God's love, which is eternal and the source of all loves. And as scholars say, this is the love that welcomes and embraces those we love so dearly when this mortal life is over. This love of God is our eternal dwelling place, where the darkness is darkness no more, where no torment of cancer will ever reach. 
where pain will be no more, where we are united with the way, the truth, and the life of God. Anna, Hudson, and Cece, your dad was so proud of all three of you. His love lives on in you. This love is precious. Hold it tight. Know that although your dad rests in Jesus, he will be your coach, cheering you on wherever life takes you. Mandy, in his final words of love, Billy has given you a locket of jeweled words. May you wear them around your heart to warm his absence. May you always feel his love. May everyone here, those in person, online, in the bell tower, and over in Pinder Hall, may everyone here love on Billy's family in the years to come. May all of us find comfort in knowing Billy has returned to the heart of God, where he is surrounded by all the company of heaven. May we remember Billy's life and give thanks for the memories and laughter we shared with him. We have now entered a time that will forever be known as a time after Billy's mortal life. But may we fill this time we have with the kind of love Billy showed us. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, saying together, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For our brother Billy, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Billy and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for Billy and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen.
Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Billy. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, life is short, and there is too little time to gladden the hearts of all who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.